Hello, everyone. There's been a ton of news that's dropped in the past, I don't know, 24, 36 hours. It's basically all in like one block that all feels very doom and gloom for the LCS. And I thought that I could address it on Wednesday when we do our live hotline leak in New York City, which you should all come to if you live in range. And then you can talk about what I'm going to talk about here, there, and we'll discuss your takes on it. But I can't because uh, I can't wait that long, I guess, to address all this stuff for the time being because it's all hitting. People are tweeting at me and saying, hey, I want your take on this. And there's just nobody else talking about this. Um, and so I kind of feel like I need to stem the tide a little bit. Uh, shout out to Alienware for sponsoring this video. Also, Drew, who's been working with me out here, wanted the day off because he's working a ton. And, uh, you know, the proletariat getting uppity these days. And so he has the day off. Very reasonable. But also, that's why this video might seem scuffed. I don't get the day off because I have to make this. Uh, so, in a pretty quick succession, yesterday morning... Blix reported that the LCS is looking to move from Saturdays and Sundays to Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, North America failed to make it out of groups for any of our teams. We also had, I believe, our worst performance ever at 3-15, and 15, going 0-9 the first week and picking up one game each per team in the second week. And then... Today, uh, there's been a whole bunch of discussion, renewed discussion against um, uh, the rumors that a lot of teams are looking to cut back budget and all that stuff this offseason because uh, Papa Smithy announced that he's leaving Hunter T and in his goodbye post said that he no longer feels like Hunter T's roster building methodology is the same as it was back in 2019. So a lot of people are looking at that and saying like, oh, look, uh, more evidence of Budget's getting cut. We already had Team Liquid talk about how they're not going to do the super team thing anymore. So uh, I understand why a bunch of LCS people are freaking out. And you start to see a lot of sentiment around, oh, LCS is dying, blah, 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 blah. We did a video, which is up on my Twitter, and also I posted it to Reddit, just interviewing LCS fans at the venue, or uh, general fans at the venue, yesterday about what they thought about the changes and I would suggest a lot of you guys go look at it because it's pretty interesting in terms of, you know, excuse a little different than what you're reading online. But regardless, a lot of people are freaking out. And what's aggravating to me is in situations like this, no one ever comes out and like talks about it other than to say LCS is dying. Like you hear nothing from Riot. You hear nothing from anybody who wants to like actually dive into the issues, um, at least not that I can see. So there just ends up being kind of this echo chamber that occurs of like everybody being like, oh yeah, it's dead, it's dead, it's dead, it's dead, it's dead, which I think is really damaging to the brand of the LCS, which is something I really care about. And so I'm really aggravated that it has to come down to like me being this voice every time. Anyway, let's talk about what all of this means. Uh, so one, let's talk about Worlds. Worlds. Okay, yeah, we sucked. Uh, I have done so many We Sucked videos and so many We Sucked responses that I am sucked dry, phrasing, of like everything, of just, just things to talk about when it comes to this stuff. And and I think you guys should be too. Like, are any of us really surprised? This is the way it always goes. We should have the default assumption that this is how it's going to go until something gets better. I'm not saying everybody needs to go into the worlds being like, well, we're going to fail and everything's miserable and like, why watch? But I do think like, we should not be surprised when we perform about where everyone expected. Let's look at our lineup. We had a super team that did not make it, Team Liquid. They couldn't get their act together. They don't deserve to be here, but honestly, like that should have been the first sign that things might be in trouble because we usually do send some sort of super team that maybe does okay. Um, we had EG, who had been looking really good, but for, were basically a brand-new roster this year and then had an emergency sub that left them going out in third place um, in finals. We didn't know how well they were going to do. They looked, they looked. Honestly, I think they looked better than we expected. They managed to 3-0 Mad Lions. They gave us, because of that, a positive win record against Europe for this Worlds. I think we take that as a W. Uh, we had 100 Thieves who, in really critical moments throughout this year, failed to ever deliver, right? I mean, they got 3-0'd in the finals in spring and summer. Um, and I don't feel like there was a lot of faith in their ability to put up at this world. Whether or not that was warranted or not, I don't know. But I guess the results would Im imply that it was warranted. And then we had Claude9, who 
kind of came out of nowhere, looked really good for just the finals. And then going into this, you had a lot of voices basically saying like, well, the meta was really good for them at finals and it's probably not very good for them at all. This world's they were like this rebuilt Frankenstein roster going into summer. You had Zven who had just roll swapped. Like, I don't think we sent like <laughs> three lineups that we should have been overwhelmingly confident in to worlds this year. And thus, you know, we, everything went the way I think that people should have expected it to go. So, Whatever. I just don't, like, yeah, the world's performance sucked. I don't know what you guys expect. I don't think that's a reason to stop watching League of Legends in North America, because guess what? Like, international competition, because the way that Riot has designed it, is like a tiny fraction of the amount of games that you can watch an LCS team play in, because they're going to be here. And, like, I just don't believe the vast majority of you that say, like, I'm done watching every year, because guess what? Like, in a little bit, myself and others are going to be putting out uh, all sorts of rumors and stuff like that about, I don't know, crazy players that are going to be playing with each other next year or interesting lineups. And uh, and hopefully that means that you guys will come back and, and you'll watch. So let's go into number two, uh, which is the Papa Smithy stuff, um, which is a bit of a broader discussion around teams spending less money. Ultimately, I'm pretty okay with teams spending less money if it doesn't mean that they're checked out. Um because let's think about why we got into the spend more money place in the, in the first case. So one, it was really Team Liquid for a long time that led the charge on spend more money. Um, and what they realized was for a long time, Cloud9 and TSM had kind of the league locked up basically by just being the brands that you knew were going to perform pretty well, especially TSM. TSM was able to get away with, in my opinion, paying a lot less money because a lot of people were da down to go play with Bjerg. And so there was, and C9 also just had like really demonstrated results. They were actually really good at, for a while, built, finding young talent or undervalued talent, oftentimes TSM's leftovers, and then renovating them <laughs> and, and uh, rehabilitating them and then getting them to win. And so if you wanted, if you were Team Liquid, you're like, okay, well, how can I beat these two teams? I'll just overspend them. And so they would do things like acquire Peter, uh, bring over Core JJ, uh, do a lot of different stuff to basically just outspend. Well, eventually they started winning a ton, which forced C9 and TSM to start spending because you no longer had just the inherent like discount passive perk that you could get from being top teams. And, T and TL like drove up the, the price of a lot of the league. And then also all these teams started being able to raise money as well, which allowed them to have more capital to spend on more rosters. And there was also this idea of like, we want to perform internationally. We should just go acquire expensive talent. And so that drove everybody up. And then Hunter T uh, basically showed up in the league, started doing the same thing. EG, not, not as dramatically, but also, you know, they were like, we got to make a name for ourselves. So you started to just have a lot of people spending a lot of money in the space. And what did it do for us? Uh, I think somebody once told me, described it as like, all they've all managed to do is increase the price of lifting an LC LCS trophy. Because despite all this increased money that was being spent, you never actually had a situation where we seemed to do much better at Worlds than we had previously. Um, in fact, over time, I think we've probably trended downwards, right? So we know that the solution to international performance is not spending money on big names internationally. So why should we continue to, or why should we worry if teams are going to spend less money, especially on their rosters. Now, I am worried about things where teams are spending less, less money on content. I think that that could be an issue. I also worry about a situation where maybe teams would decide to spend less money on infrastructure and building out um, you know, pathways for young rookie talent to come up. Uh, but I don't actually think that that is too much of a concern. I mean, the content thing is a thing, but I don't... I think that the takeaway from this year was... We need more JoJo's and less perks in the LCS. And so I like, I don't, I am not in panic mode yet about teams pulling budget. Now, obviously you have like the Dignitas of the world that are just like chilling, uh, resting, investing. Um, but I, I don't, um, I don't worry too much about teams spending less money 
Uh, and quite frankly, a ton of you guys shouldn't either because I see all of your comments on Reddit that are like, I can't believe these guys make all this money and then they can't actually show up and do well at Worlds. So whatever, it's fine. Like Prices are going to go down. I think it's probably a good idea. I think they've been going up for too long. I worry a little bit about teams starting to check out on League versus, you know, are they just spending less money because they don't want to do crazy expensive rosters that don't seem to really change anything. All right, so now we have the last thing, right, which is the scheduled shift, which is, from my understanding, not official yet. I expect it to go through. Um, but my, I'm so fucking frustrated about this, guys, because here's what I'll tell you. I'd heard rumors about this for a very long time, and I heard them long before Valorant's schedule or anything was in motion. And, like, that's why I don't, I was really frustrated because I started to realize that the narrative was going to become League is leaving the weekends and it's getting kicked out from Val or for Val, which is not what my understanding was of the situation. I am sure that there is some like nice value in the fact that like now you have the scheduling situation. But like I, I think there's a world where even if Val was not happening next year, LCS would still be on the weekdays. Now, we can debate whether or not that's a good idea. Maybe I'll talk about that in a second. But my, like, I get so frustrated because I feel like Riot cannot get out of their own way on the communication stuff. Like, the other day, Bjergsen became eligible to go to other teams. Uh, it's a little bit of lack of clarity on whether or not he's an official free agent or whatever. That news got communicated to teams and then basically within 20 or so minutes it was reported so the days of like hanging out waiting for information not to go public that's kind of over you ha you cannot wait like months whenever you're starting to make plans to communicate this stuff to the public if you are a riot or if you're like a team or something like that i'm the biggest thing I'm surprised by was that the FlyQuest cell did not get leaked. But even then, people knew there were a lot of rumors that they were on the market. So anyway, that's so my, my takeaway is I'm aggravated because a lot of you now think, and I don't blame you at all for this, that League is getting kicked out for Val, which really starts to tell the story of like, okay, Riot's giving up on LCS, it's getting sunsetted. Blah, blah blah. Again, like that is not my understanding of how this stuff went down, uh, and I still think that there was a good chance that the like, I don't think Val is the reason this is happening. If it happens, and even if it didn't wasn't around, like I still think that there's a good chance LCS would be looking at the weekdays. Let's talk about the weekdays. Are they going to? If this happens, are we screwed on viewership? I don't know. Maybe, possibly. Uh, I think there's a decent chance of it, but here's what I do know. Uh, Riot has tried to kind of like move the meter a little bit on LCS for a while to try to fix it. You know, it's like, okay, we're going to do um, some games on Monday. Okay, we're going to do them on Friday. Okay, we're going to make like a one-year format change where now like spring split does matter. Okay, now we're back to it not mattering, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think that the path to increase viewership is going to be by these like little tweaks here and there. And so I personally think that if Riot is considering doing this, and again, what I've heard is that it is not because of Al, that they probably, hopefully, please dear God, have pretty good reasons for doing so. And like I can think of some. So if you go watch that video I did where I interviewed uh, some LCS fans, like a lot of them are talking about how it's kind of better for their schedule for it to be weekdays. I think there's an argument to be made that the LCS audience has aged overall, that you have a lot of young people playing Val or other things, Roblox. And instead, the people who used to play League or watch League, they're all now parents. They're doing things on the weekends. They've got, they're, it's not like they're in college anymore as much. I know some of you are in college. Not as many of them are in college. Um, and so maybe they're, they have other stuff they're doing. And whereas weeknights become much more available, you don't have like homework anymore on weeknights. Instead on weekends, you have, uh, plans with the boys. So, uh, or gals, mimosa brunches, you know? Uh, so 
I think that's one argument why this could work. I also think that when LCS got bumped a couple hours later on Saturdays to accommodate LEC moving to Saturday mornings, that you actually have it starting much later in the day for the East Coast. I watched a video recently about how the vast majority of, of people in North America actually live in like the later time zones, even though I'm very West Coast centric. And so I think, you know, if you're able to do it earlier on a weekday, uh, even though that sounds kind of counterintuitive, that it could actually be better. So like, I think there are reasons to consider that weekdays could be better. Here's even one like kind of weird one. I think one of the, my frustrations over time is that you see a lot less riot people working on the weekends at the LCS where they all used to come out on the weekends to work at the LCS or be there. And so while I'm of the firm opinion that like if you don't want to work on weekends and you want to work on weekdays instead, you should not be working on the LCS product, Riot allows a lot of people to not work on the weekends. And you will probably have far more buy-in of these people if you're asking all of them to work on the weekdays. It makes talent acquisition easier and all that stuff. There are obviously issues. I have no idea how they're going to fill that studio or even like have anybody in that studio if it's starting you know, early afternoon at some point on a Wednesday or a Thursday or whenever they end up doing it. But like, I am down to mix up the formula even if it risks some pretty rough stuff because I do, don't... like We have to reverse the trend. And um, so I don't know. A lot of people within the community are... Like, they disagree with me on that, and I think it makes sense that a lot of people would disagree with me on it. I think there's a lot of reasons to be skeptical, uh, but I'm not – I am skeptical, but I am down for the adventure <laughs> of trying weekdays. Um, anyway, Riot should just communicate all this shit. They should just fucking get ahead of these things so that it doesn't become this narrative of – oh my god, Val is like kicking LCS out and like now it's happening during Worlds around the same time that like 100 Thieves is... It's just... It, these things are so avoidable. Please don't let them get to this point. I am begging you, Riot Games. Because uh, this was a huge open secret behind the scenes for like a very long time. I am almost surprised it took this long for it to get out. I couldn't... I didn't feel comfortable saying something because of the conversations I was having and who I was having them with. But, like, I just, please stop, like, the negativity around the league can be avoided in some ways, and this is a perfect example. So things are not, I don't think LCS is dying yet, okay? Yeah, there's things to be worried about, but I don't think all the news that came out in the past couple of days are, um, are it's as dire as everybody thinks. So, anyway, peace out. This is me in New York. Thanks to Alienware for sponsoring the video. Check out their stuff. We're using all their hardware while we're in town. Please come out on Wednesday. Uh, to see us. We're going to be at the Cutting Room uh, in New York. It's a really cool venue. It might be our coolest venue for the whole trip. I don't know. Uh, and there should be some pretty cool people there. So please, uh, sirens going off. I got to go. Bye.